And one of the territorial uh, interesting uh, experiences in Italy is the district of uh, sport cars, of people that is passionate by the idea of creating instruments that go fast, faster than the others, that are beautiful, that go uh, always beyond what's possible. Andrea Pontremoli is uh, uh, going to tell us about the stories that are linked to this territory. Dallara is in this territory that you know, it's uh, all around Emilia Romagna, and uh, his cars uh, run uh, all the Indianapolis and uh, related uh, races in the States and all over. He has organized uh, an incredibly big uh, meeting of uh, 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 projects of new cars that go very fast, that come from universities. Uh, he is working on his territory to improve its capability to develop not only uh, for his uh, factory but for uh, the whole uh, of uh, the, the people that is uh, there. You know that the mountain is uh, some place in which there is not the same development that in, the, in, in other parts, and he is working on that too. So the knowledge that comes out from a factory like that, that has an in, in international reach, is also related to the territorial uh, development and the other way around. Andrea. Yeah, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I don't have a formal presentation, but I have something that is in my mind, and so I try to transfer to you what I mean about uh, know-how. And this is the, the, the change that I see now in the manufacturing, uh, because uh, it's the transfer from knowledge to know-how. Know-how means I know how to do it. And uh, this is something that uh, was the part of the Renaissance, because the artists like Giotto and uh, Michelangelo, all these people, uh, they knew how to do things, and also they had the genius in their mind. And more and more, with the technology that we have today, this come uh, the new Renaissance. So the movement from knowledge to know-how. And uh, here we are, uh, I explain you a little bit about uh, our district here that is called Motor Valley. In the Motor Valley you have uh, some famous brands like uh, Toro Rosso, Pagani, Ducati, Ferrari, Maserati, Lamborghini, Dallara. We are all inside a circle that is 100 kilometers. And this has a meaning. Why we are all here? And the same is in UK, in the Oxfordshire. In the Oxfordshire you can find uh, Mercedes, uh, Formula One, you find uh, Red Bull, Lotus, they are all there. Why this? Because the know-how is not only in the company that gives the brand to the car, but the, the know-how is inside the territory. We have few specialists here that they know how to do very special things in our cars, and uh, I want to let you know how we have organized our company because I think it's a way to foster this concept of uh, new renaissance. Dallara is a small company, family owned. Now I come in seven years ago uh, as a partner of the company, so the shareholders are myself and uh, Mr. Dallara, the Dallara family. And uh, before, I have been uh, 27 years in IBM, uh, and I left IBM as president and CEO of IBM Italy, South Europe, in reality. And uh, you can say why you move from information technology to racing cars. Because the connection is very high, and there is another point that is very important that is my passion. 
you know, you have to imagine that up to now, you know, I was paying to see a race, and now I am paid to see a race. So this is a big change. And uh, so when I come in in the company, uh, the company was very small, it's still very small, even if we are more or less in seven years, we grew up four times in terms of size. Um, what we do? We do basically three things. First, we design our car using carbon fiber, composite, mainly carbon fiber composite. Why? Because weight is very important in a race car. Only to give you an idea, if you take 100% as the performance of a race car, 15% is given by the engine, 35%, 3.5 is given by the weight of the car, and 50%, 5.0 is given by the aerodynamics. So we have concentrated our company in the aerodynamics and the weight management, that means carbon fiber. We don't care about engines, so we buy the engine by who you want, so Porsche, Ferrari, Mercedes, whoever. So the first thing is to, to be in the carbon fiber, because the weight, that is 35% of the performance of the car. The second thing is aerodynamics, that's worth 50% of the, of the performance. And uh, the third thing is vehicle dynamics. So how to put together all the elements over the parameters of the car and try to simulate a behavior of the car given certain engine aerodynamics and weight. So this is very simple to lay down, but it's very complex to realize. Especially because uh, when you have to design using carbon fiber, what is really important, uh, I think, is the, our value add is, are the mathematical models that are behind the design and the supercomputer that are behind the design. Only to give an idea, when I joined the company, we had some equation that lasts 20 days, so 2-0, 20 days, 24 hours per day, to be able to see if the equation was right or not and imagine if it was wrong. So now, uh, normally our equation lasts eight hours, so that means that our designers, they can work during the day and uh, during the night they launch the, the mathematical model and in the morning they can see if they were right or wrong. This is, it seems only a productivity tool, in reality, is a, a know-how builder because you can test more innovation in a given time. You know, when you are a designer and you know that you have only one shot in 20 days, it's different to have 20 shots in 20 days. And this is why I'm saying this is not only a productivity tool but is a, a know-how builder. The second area is aerodynamics, where we have uh, inside our company two wind tunnels to test the models, but the most important part is becoming now the CFD, the Computational Fluid Dynamics. Again, here we are talking about mathematical models and supercomputers, that uh, they are able to design the airflow and to understand how to improve the aerodynamics every minute, and then we use the wind tunnel to measure the improvement. So the third thing is vehicle dynamics. Again, is how to put together all these numbers and to try to simulate the behavior of, of a car in a given racetrack. And now our, our level of precision is very high, I have to say, because we we miss the real result by three tenths or four tenths of a second of a second in one lap, that is one minute and twenty seconds. So the precision is very high. And now we have done another step 
in this area, that is uh, to, to build up a driving simulator. And we have introduced for the first time a concept. In the past, we had the concept of hardware in the loop, where you put a real car inside an information technology loop. Now we have this concept of human in the loop. We put a real driver inside the loop. So a real driver that is able to drive a mathematical model. This driving simulator uh, is, was really at the beginning a research tool. We have spent 10 million euro on this, financed by our company, and uh, was a big surprise for us because not only was uh, a way to test our ideas, but uh, in reality, when we, we set up the concept, we wanted uh, something uh, different of the normal driving simulator. Driving simulator is used to do two things. One is to let a driver to test a car, a new car. The second thing is to be able to drive in a new racetrack that the, the driver doesn't know, or to drive a new car in a known racetrack. So these are the two things. New racetrack, new car. We want to do a third thing. The third thing was to enable a driver to drive a car that was never built. So to drive only mathematical models. And this was really a challenge for our uh, project leaders and was a, a challenge so hard that none of our project leaders accept to do it. Neither outside the company we were able to find somebody able to accept this challenge. So what we did was to hire 14 young graduate engineers they didn't know that it was an impossible task, and they did it. Very simply, they were able to build up this driving simulator and uh, three years ago. It was so successful that uh, now we have built up the second one in US, in Indianapolis, in our premises in Indianapolis, and is full booked up to the end of 2015. And I have to tell you the truth. Uh, I miss completely the objectives of this tool. You know, if you go to an MBA, they explain you that the first thing that you have to understand when you make this kind of big investment is to understand who are your customers, and second, the business model. I missed both. My thought was at the beginning that the our customers were the drivers and the teams and the business model was simply to rent the simulator to them paying uh, the simulator by hour so you pay by hour the simulator and the driver is the and the customer is the driver in reality now the customer uh, are the big OEMs like uh, Honda, Porsche, GM, Brembo, Magneti Marelli, Pirelli tires, these kind of people. And the business model is to build up mathematical models for them. And uh, this is the change that I go back to the Renaissance concept. What was the most important thing here? Well, the people that have used their knowledge, their know-how and the tools to create something that was not there. Look at the beginning said that how difficult it is to predict the future. But the most easy way to predict the future is to design it. If you try to design it, for sure you, are, you have an advantage compared to the others. Maybe you are the first one able to do something that nobody else has thought about. But to move to this new renaissance and uh, is really something that is related to people, to a person, to the human. And this is why we call it humanistic capitalism. You know, uh, David before showed you 
why they have offshore to UK uh, the automotive uh, activities. Do you know how much is the uh, weight of the label in a car compared to the price? I think now is 2%, 1%. And you offshore the entire production for the one or two percent? Even if you pay three times, this is not something so important. Why this? Because if we go back to what I told you before, the production of the car is really a small part of the entire process of to build up a car. Only to give you an idea, it takes to us to build up a race car from the white piece of paper to a running car in the racetrack, nine months, like a baby. You have a little fun at the beginning, but. <laughs> uh, nine months of which eight months are in the virtual world and only one month to produce the physical part. And when you are sure, normally, you take in consideration the one month, so the production, where the cost of the labor is one or two percent. So we are talking about nothing. This is why now they have understood this big guru of the MBAs, to re, re, what is the name? Re offshore. Reshore. Reshore. So they are going back. In the meantime, they have lost millions of people. And this is the real problem that you have in Europe. And I give you another example of our experiments that we are doing in our company. I have started it five years ago. And uh, we have taken uh, 15 people that they were graduates, inoccupied, so they have no work, living in our territory. And we, uh, we work with them and we create a group where we teach them how to design using CAD, using the three-dimensional uh, tools. And it was a big effort for them, but we put on it uh, software, hardware, and our engineers to teach them. You know what? After the course, all of them, they find a, a job. Not only in Dallara, but they find a job in several other companies in our territory. So then come to my mind the question, you know, the people are the same. The territory is the same. What has changed? The know-how. Then we did this the year after, then the year after again. And now this is the fifth year that we are doing this. All the people are working. And then we started another uh, course that uh, we call uh, uh, technology, the technologist of uh, process, specialized on carbon fiber. You know what? In the last uh, course, we were uh, obliged to have, um, how do you say, Asta? Uh, an auction, an auction for the people because we had much more uh, companies uh, that they want these kind of skills compared to the people. And these people, again, they were without any job at the beginning, and they were living in this territory. And then when I see in Italy we have this big uh, discussion about uh, the Articolo 18, that is the War Council uh, and so on, there is one guy that was an engineer, a chemical engineer. He resigned from his company to be able to make the requirement that you have to be unoccupied. He resigned to his company, 
uh, contratto a tempo indeterminato, he made the course and then he find another kind of job. So the young people are more and more interested that you take care about them as a person instead to see only what they are able to do. One big thing has changed. You know, in the past we had uh, men servicing a machine or a robot. Now there is the robot or the machine that is serving a man. Remember Charlie Chaplin? You are serving a machine. Now with a 3D machine you need ideas, otherwise the machine will stay there. This is a big change and they want to make you, you know, make up your mind. This change is an incredible opportunity for Europe. It's an incredible opportunity for us. If we start to work in this way and we take in consideration the important things. Luca mentioned before this uh, uh, formula SAE because uh, i have a lot of questions saying how you hire your people you know i we are a small company we are 250 people 200 and, no 360 now but uh, we receive around 50 to 60 cvs every day and we are 350 how you manage this how you can find the future generation of engineers and so we reverse the, the process. So we start to call a, in a big battle uh, people all over the world saying, uh, you come here and we have uh, a competition uh, that is called Formula SAE. SAE means uh, Society of Automotive Engineers. There are a set of rules that is common all over the world. And you know, uh, we have done this uh, 20 days ago in our small village. Only 1,000 people live in this village where Varara, uh, Dallara is based. And we had 2,000 engineers for four, five days coming there to show their cars, their ideas, their innovation. 2,000 in a small village of 1,000. And then we hire the people from this group. And I put this uh, at disposal to everybody. We had, for example, the, the technical director of Mercedes Formula One that came in to see these people. The Ferrari uh, Formula One came in. Red Bull, SKF, uh, I don't know, Petronas. All these people came in to be a judge and we are looking for the judge for free because we have no money. But only the, to have the possibility to judge people that for sure they have one thing, passion for race cars. And second, you have the possibility to test them for five days. So this, this is another part that come in from the Renaissance, passion passion for what you are doing. And here I have a question to you. More or less I see a lot of mothers and fathers. What are you doing to your children to understand their passion? If I put the question to myself as an entrepreneur, what I am doing to teach in the schools, but at the primary school, what is uh, an industry today? What I have discovered that uh, no one of the professors that came into our company had an idea what is a company or a, an industry today. They, they remained at the Charlie Chaplin concept of uh, industry. And this is not the manufacturing that is today, the, that is the, the, or the future manufacturing that we are looking for. Manufacturing, manufacturing 
uh, is an Italian word, means mano and factoring, making, making with your hands. But you need your brain connected with your hands. This will make the difference in the future. And I think that industries, institutions, schools, they have to work together to create the future that we are all looking for. Thank you for your attention.